Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Got a pretty interesting show for you here today. Going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys, Michael Parsons, and uh, his whining and complaining. But before we get to that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please go ahead, click that subscribe, that like, and that notification bell. And listen up. I, I really appreciate it. We're almost at 800 subscribers. I've been doing this for a little while, working hard at it, working to give you that uh, outstanding sports content. But this is what I got to tell you. Please go ahead, click that subscribe, share the pod, make sure you do these things because as soon as we get to that magic number of 1,000 and I go ahead and get the show monetized, what I'm then going to start doing is taking in callers on live call-in shows that I hope to host weekly, all right? Already got the equipment together and I'm working on getting all that set up. But if you want to be able to call in and talk to me directly, go at me, debate me, whatever it is, I'm all good with that. But you got to help me get to that magic 1,000 subscriber mark, okay? So please, let's do this as soon as we can and uh, then we'll get the fun started. Um, if you want the audio-only version of the podcast, you know what to do. Open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast. We should come right up. Make sure you give us that like and uh, that five-star review if you enjoy the content and leave us a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, help more sports fans find us. Now let's get right to it. Podcasting, right? When I was growing up, um, radio was the big thing, right? And not even, I'm 45 years old. So like for the first half of my life, there wasn't even really, not the first half, I should say, maybe the first 10, 15 years of my life, there wasn't a whole lot of sports talk radio, right? Like uh, my dad used to listen to games in the car when we were riding somewhere or whatever. So I kind of got into sports radio from him. And then as it went on, sports talk radio became more and more of a thing in more markets across the country. And then eventually satellite radio came along. But now because of the internet and how uh, prevalent that is, we have podcasting and podcasting is awesome, right? Anybody could do a podcast. Anybody can share their point of view with the world. And that's good and that's bad, right? Because let's be real, you got some people up there, out there with podcasts who don't know what the hell they're talking about, right? But you also have uh, other people who may not have the opportunity to go the traditional sports media route who are able to take this route and kind of spread their thoughts and have the opportunity to have success and uh, turn it into something else on a larger scale, right? I'm one of those people, right? Even though I am um, traditionally trained as a journalist and have done legitimate sports journalism for different reasons. You know, I'm not in a position to really go uh, chase the jobs around the country and do it in the uh, traditional way that many sports journalists have. So I take advantage of this as, you know, my opportunity to uh, spread my thoughts and go ahead and, and show uh, my personality to the world and talk sports and show how I see them, right? So a lot of other people are doing this, um, regular people like you and me, uh, athletes included, right? And so. It's kind of interesting when athletes do it. Some are retired, some are still playing, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the big name athletes that's doing this, that's still very active is uh, Dallas Cowboys linebacker, Michael Parsons, right? And he does his podcast, I think it's called The Edge, and he does it on uh, Bleacher Ray, uh, Bleacher Report, I'm sorry, picked up his podcast and I'm happy for him, right? Because he's getting the opportunity to show his personality, to give his thoughts, to kind of interact with people and let people see the game from his perspective. And that's really cool, right? Because a lot of times we wonder, what are the athletes thinking? Now that said, that doesn't mean that because the athlete is actually in the game or because the athlete is doing things that the rest of us can't do or has that insider view, which is absolutely valuable to the sports media market. That doesn't always mean that the athlete is right or the athlete always knows what they're talking about, right? And what am I talking about when I say this? In this case, talking about Michael Parsons, Obviously, we know that uh, the Dallas Cowboys played the Buffalo Bills uh, last Sunday, right? Last weekend. And um, they pretty much got their butts handed to them, right? I think it was 30 to 10 was the final score. Uh, yes. No, I'm sorry. 31 to 10, right? And so uh, Dak Prescott didn't play well. 134 passing yards. Uh, one, uh, I think one touchdown, one interception. And really, the bulk of those passing yards came when the game was well out of reach, right? Empty calories, as Shannon Sharp likes to say. But regardless of that, the Cowboys continued their uh, woeful ways on the road, right? They're an outstanding football team at home. I think they averaged like 40 points a game at home this year and like 19 on the road. So something is going wrong, right? Huge disparity between those two. Anyway, Michael Parsons, he does his show weekly and he got on his show and he was talking about it. And he said some interesting things I'd like to respond to. So let's go ahead, listen to the comments Michael Parsons made, and then we'll come back and kind of discuss those, all right? So check it out, and we'll be back to, to discuss what he had to say. 
I understand is like everyone just waits for the Cowboys to lose. Um, I saw multiple analysts, people who are fake analysts who somehow got jobs on TV saying, there goes your boy. Like, it's almost to the point where it's like almost sick that they're waiting for another, a former players are waiting for other current players to fail so that way they have something to talk about. And I mean, it's not even to just get into names. I mean, I feel like at this point you kind of know who you are and it's like, oh, there he is. That's the person we've been waiting for. And it's like, why do you want a person to lose so bad? As a former player and as a current player, I feel like you, like I'm a fan of the game, right? Whether I'm playing Josh Allen or whoever, at the end of the day, I don't want to see Josh Allen hurt. I don't want to see him fail. I want him to set out a continuous career. Um, at the end of the day, obviously, when we're playing and we're lining up, I'm trying to beat him, right? But it seems that a lot of people are just waiting for uh, people to fail. And then you get into the criticism, and I've seen a lot of people saying, well, how do we want to use Micah? We shouldn't um, – you, you, we should use him more off the ball. Well, guess what? There was times where they moved me off the ball, and then y'all were like, well, why isn't he rushing the passer? Why isn't he doing this? It's almost like you can't – like I said, teams will always play us differently. Josh Allen averaging 30 to 40 passing attempts. So, obviously, we didn't think he was going to come out and run it the whole game and run consecutive plays over and over again. So, I mean, that's obviously not part of the game plan. But it's almost like you can't always get everything you want. You you want someone to rush, and then you want someone to stop the run, be off the ball. It's like you can't, you can't do everything. And, obviously, it's easy to point because – certain groupings is going to be in certain personnel. It's a lot of giveaways. What coverages you can be in it is very predictable in the NFL. It's hard to win in the NFL at the end of the day. It's hard to play perfectly week in and week in out every day. And that's just the reality. Okay. So Michael Parsons, he said some interesting things, but I'm going to be honest. It sounded like a lot of whining to me, right? It sounded like you want to have your cake and eat it too. And what do I mean by that? Michael Parsons, we know is one of the best young defenders in the NFL, right? And um, obviously, he's a linebacker. He is a pass rushing specialist, and he has been that since he walked into the league. And, you know, nobody's taking that away from him. Michael Parsons, you're outstanding. However, this is a guy that people are saying. Um, I actually heard uh, the comment made that he was uh, the closest thing we've seen to Lawrence Taylor. Excuse me? Or that he's, you know, He's just uh, unstoppable. He's a game wrecker. And at times he can be, and that's cool. Yeah, he's an outstanding defensive player, pass rusher. Get it. Does he not realize? Well, let, let me back up a little bit, right? So Michael Parsons is complaining that he says, you know, he's upset, basically, according to what we just heard, that he feels like people are sitting back waiting for the Cowboys to lose. Let's be real. The Cowboys are the most polarizing team in the NFL, maybe the most polarizing team in American sports. What, the Cowboys and the Yankees, right? Maybe the Lakers. It wasn't so much the Lakers, but I think if the Lakers are on that list, LeBron has a lot to do with that. But Cowboys and the Yankees, definitely two most polarizing teams in American sports. Why are the Cowboys polarizing? Because this is a team that calls itself America's team. This is a team whose fan base is adamant every season that this is the year they're going to win the championship. This is a team whose owner can't stay out of the limelight, whose owner can't shut up, whose owner has a weekly radio show. Uh, the only owner that you see so blatantly in the media every single week, right? It always has to be Jerry, 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 Jerry. Jerry Jones has a gigantic ego. And okay, cool. I, I suppose in a way he has a right to, right? He bought the Dallas Cowboys, I want to say, in 1991 for or maybe 1989 somewhere right in there but he bought the dallas cowboys for 150 million dollars the franchise is now uh valued by forbes as um the most valuable sports franchise on earth at almost 10 billion dollars right so jerry's got a right to have an ego that said that same ego is likely what's kept the dallas cowboys from winning a championship since 1995 so we're talking almost 30 years you've had tremendous amounts of talent but because you don't want to step out of the way and put your ego to the side and bring real football people in to run the organization you probably that's probably the reason why you haven't won yet right you look at uh new england patriots does robert Kraft have a weekly radio show does robert Kraft need to be in the media every time you turn around no he needs to let his people who he trusts who he hired who he cuts the checks for make the football decisions and guess what that got him six championships 
in a what 20 year span uh the greatest span in nfl history six championships and nine super bowl appearances if i'm not mistaken so jerry jones uh, we get it greatness in most things come with a big ego right but if you would step out of the way maybe you'd have more success but that's not the point the point is the cowboys are you know um America's team, quote unquote, they're extremely loved, they're extremely hated. And with that comes a lot of things. And this is what Michael Parsons is complaining about. He says that he sees a lot of people, especially in the media, sitting back and waiting for the Cowboys to lose. And I'll admit, I don't know so much about the media, but I'll, I'll admit when you're a polarizing team, much like Floyd Mayweather Jr. was a polarizing fighter, a lot of people hate watch you. So as many fans as you have, there's just as many people who want to see you lose. So yes, a lot of people hate watch the Cowboys and watch them to see them hopefully lose, right? I'm not one of those people. I really don't care either way. But the point is, there's a lot of people like that. And the fact is, there are so many benefits that come with being a Dallas Cowboy. And for instance, everything you do gets blown up and magnified. I mean, I just mentioned all the all the tremendous um uh, props that Michael Parsons gets the comparisons to Lawrence Taylor, which I think are absurd. Um, you get Dak Prescott constantly uh, getting more attention than he's deserving of. Um, you get just in general, you get the Cowboys almost every week having either a game of the week on Sunday or some type of primetime game, whether it's Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night, right? This is what comes with being a Dallas Cowboy. You get all the props. So my question to you now, Micah, is why are you upset when people get on you for losing and not playing up to your potential, especially because we see the Cowboys are an outstanding football team this season. This is the team I mentioned that puts up 40 points per game at home. This is the team that uh, just recently uh, beat the Philadelphia Eagles, who was in the Super Bowl last year and was a couple of minutes from winning the championship, right? One of the best teams in the NFC. This is a team that went on its game, can play with anybody, right? And again, the Cowboys get a tremendous amount of praise, but when they're when they don't do what they're supposed to do yeah people are going to rip them why are you upset about that that's what comes with having the star on your helmet for instance i mentioned earlier that uh michael parsons has been compared to lawrence taylor why are we comparing him to arguably the greatest defender of all time if he's not even arguably the greatest defender in the game today right we talk about michael parsons as a pass rushing specialist let me tell you the people who are ahead of him this season in sacks and mind you michael parsons hasn't missed any time tj watt daniel hunter khalil mack trey hendrickson josh allen max crosby miles garrett montez sweat you have to get to the eighth player in the league for michael parsons to be there in terms of uh uh sacks this season right and he's tied with two other guys right uh justin matabuki from baltimore and jonathan greenard from houston so he's tied with two other guys for eighth in the league in sacks, but we're comparing this dude to Lawrence Taylor. Why are we comparing him to Lawrence Taylor? He is an outstanding player, totally get it, but we're comparing him to Lawrence Taylor, why? Because he's got the star on his helmet. Let's look at it from another angle, right? Michael Parsons, again, outstanding player, entertaining guy. We love to watch him if we love football, especially if we love defense, cool. Michael Parsons has a podcast. I love that you're getting to send your thoughts out to the world. I love that you're getting to share your viewpoint and help us see things how you see them because that makes us all better as football fans, right? And football media, but let's be real. Michael Parsons, what's the likelihood that Bleacher Report comes and picks up your podcast if you don't have that Dallas Cowboy fan base behind you? They know that you're gonna have a gargantuan fan base behind you and that is what gives you more attention on that podcast. I'm not saying it's a bad show, right? I'm not saying that at all. It, it is interesting. But the point is the fact, again, that you have the star on your helmet is playing a huge role in you being able to do what you do. Why is that so hard for you to realize, Michael Parsons? I don't get it. So you're sitting here and you're complaining about how people are waiting for the Cowboys to fail. Then they're complaining about how you play. Um, oh, I can't stop the run and rush the passer and do everything at the same time, right? Well, hey, you're getting compared to arguably the greatest defender of all time, the guy who did pretty much do everything. So yeah, you're expected to do everything at the same time, right? So here's the deal, Michael Parsons. If you have a problem with people asking why you're not doing A, B, and C in a certain game, if you have a problem with people uh, waiting for the Cowboys to lose, right? 
why don't you have a problem when people are giving you some somewhat undeserved credit, right? Comparing you to a guy you probably shouldn't be compared to yet. Why don't you have a problem with people uh, giving the Cowboys undue praise, right? Why don't you have a problem with any of the good stuff that comes along with having a star on your helmet? So you want all that, but you can't deal with the other side of the coin that comes with it. Life is about coins having two sides. Nothing is all good. Nothing is all bad. You got to take the good with the bad. That's an old saying. I didn't make that up. I can't understand for the life of me why you don't understand that. Come on, Micah. You're better than this. But what I want to know from you, everybody, what do you think? Do you think that Michael Parsons is asking for too much? Do you think you uh, do you agree with him that people are hating on the Cowboys waiting for him to lose? Do you think that people are hating on him asking for him to do everything at the same time? Give me your thoughts in the comment section. Can't wait to hear from you. Uh, can't wait to get back to you. And I'll be back on the next episode. And I'm out. Peace.